to call them saber-toothed tigers, but they weren't really tigers at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'd like to find out why it's so cold in here. I hope no one minds the temperature. It just needs to get a little colder and it'll be all set. Actually... Cold enough for what? My new ice sculpture. Uh, that's really good, do re -mi. <laughs> Silly, I haven't started yet. <laughs> what were you guys talking about? Mammoths and saber-toothed cats with seven-inch long teeth. Whoa! If only I could go back in time 14,000 years, maybe I'd get to see a saber-toothed cat up close or right on the back of a mammoth. The teacher said that we're going to learn about a very special place tomorrow. She did say it was a place that gives scientists a window to see what life was like at the end of the last ice age. A window? Couldn't be a real window. No, not a real window. It's a really deep, dark, sticky pit. Sounds messy. <laughs> oh, I love it. And get this. This special place is in the middle of the second largest city in America. Well, I know what I want to do. Let's, Let's search, search it. it! New York City has the most people, and Los Angeles has the second most. That's in the state of California. Ooh, Hollywood's there. Now let's add Deep Dark Pit and Ice Age. Look, a statue of a mammoth. And it's standing in something that looks like it could be a deep, dark, sticky pit. Oh, I think that must be the place our teacher was talking about. The La Brea Tar Pits. Let's Geo go! It's this way, come on! I wonder what a pit filled with tar has to do with the last ice age. I'm sure we're about to find out. That sign says the La Brea Tar Pits. It's time to explore. And learn more and more. Way. Follow me. Oh, ABC, one, two, three, don't worry me. For a minute, I thought my sandwich was escaping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Amelia. I'm so happy to meet you all. Hello, Hello there. there. Are you a scientist? Yes. I get to dig the prehistoric fossils of animals and plants out of the muckiest, stickiest, tariest pits you've ever seen. And yes, it is as fun as it sounds. That's fantastic. You must be a paleontologist. Well, if you like fossils like this 10,000-year-old skull of a dire wolf, then you'd love paleontology, too. A dire wolf? Are they still alive today? No, they're extinct. They were a lot like the gray wolf of today, but bigger. Fossils like this give us clues about the animals of the past and the world they lived in. Start with these fangs. Do you think they're used for eating plants or animals? Definitely animals. See how sharp the teeth are? Very good. Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores, like mountain lions, wolves, and sharks. And animals that eat only plants, like cows, sheep, and horses, are called herbivores. So exactly how did all these fossils get here? I'll show you. 
This pit is filled with fossil remains from animals that were trapped here from 10 to 40,000 years ago. Whoa! You see, oil that formed a long time ago down deep in the earth seeped up through cracks and formed pools of dark, sticky tar. When it rained, water would cover the tar. Then, animals like mammoths would come to drink the water and they'd get stuck. Since they couldn't get away, they attracted carnivores like saber-toothed cats and dire wolves who also got stuck. And that's where they stayed until a bunch of fossil-loving paleontologists like me came along about 100 years ago and started digging them up and examining them to better understand the world they lived in. So that's why the teacher called the La Brea Tar Pits a window in time. I just wish I could jump through that window into the Ice Age. ABC, I think it's time for you to see the museum. Me so let you whoa! You can say that again. <laughs> Don't read me so let you whoa! So all these animals used to live right here in Los Angeles? Yes, but long before there was a city here with giant animals like these roamed the land. Where did they go? Over here! Follow me! Well, some scientists think that the climate became too warm and dry here for the mammoths with their heavy fur coats. And the ones that stayed behind got stuck in the tar? Some of them did. Also, some scientists think that a lot of the animals were hunted by people for food. This is amazing! The skeleton of an actual saber-toothed cat. This just makes me wish more that I could be back in the actual Ice Age. You can! Well, once I finish testing my first epic game about the Ice Age, Mammoth Valley. Mammoth Valley? I want to play! Raji's game will be a great learning tool for kids here at the museum. It will feel like you're right there living with the mammoths, dire wolves, and saber-toothed cats. Oh, I want to try it! Is the game ready? Well, I haven't exactly finished testing it, but you could test it in a way nobody else ever could. I mean, if you want to. ABC, let's think this through. Don't read me? Do you really want to be the first to try something like this? Why do I ask? Wait for me! Are we really in the Ice Age? It doesn't look very icy to me. A lot of the Earth was covered in ice, but not all of it. Like the area that would become Los Angeles. It was just a lot colder than it is now. Look over there! Who wants to ride a mammoth? I do! Me too! All you have to do is answer the following question correctly. True or false? A mammoth is a carnivore. False! Right! They're herbivores! Hey, I like this game! This is awesome! <laughs> Race ya! Better watch out, do re me. We're right behind you. Not if I can help it. Winner! Oh, hey guys. What took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> False. A dire wolf's poop can be a fossil. True, true, true! Fossils can also be teeth, eggs, footprints, and shells. You're the biggest pet I've ever had. I'm naming you Whiskers. This might be my favorite video game ever! So, what did you think? That was 
Incredible! The mammoths were huge! Oh, very exciting! It was all so lifelike! We better go now, but thanks for letting us see what it was like during the Ice Age. And learn all about the amazing animals that lived here thousands of years ago! Like Whiskers! Thanks for watching! Whiskers? Can we look now, Do Re Mi? Not yet! If it gets any colder in here, we're going to have our own little ice age! Ta-da! <laughs> Whiskers! Let's keep him forever! I'll give you five minutes, and then I'm turning the temperature back up! <laughs> <laughs> about a bridge on the west coast of the United States that's more than a mile long and has two tall towers. More than a mile long? My bridge is only a foot long, but I want to make a longer one with that. <gasps> oh, and I know right where to put it. Oh, this is going to be F, U, and fun. Oh, what's going on? What's going to be fun? Building a bridge in the classroom. Do you want to try it out with us? Of course I do! Oh, but I can't right now. I just learned about a new way to paint, and I want to try it out. Do you know what picture you're going to paint? Nope, but it'll come to me. It always does. Just wait and see. This is one nice-looking bridge, one, two, three. Let's pretend that our bridge is over a mile of cold ocean water. Luckily, our bridge is strong and... Oh, 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 oh. Stop walking! Uh, our bridge might not be as strong as I thought. Let's go this way. Phew! I'm glad that wasn't a real ocean under us. And that was just five feet. How could anyone ever build a bridge that's more than a mile long? I have to find out how they did it. Me too! Let's search it! <laughs> Okay, we know it's a bridge with two towers. Oh, there's the Brooklyn Bridge. But it's on the East Coast, and our bridge is on the... West Coast. Like that one. Yes, in the city of San Francisco in the state of California. And listen to this. It has two tall towers. It's more than one mile long. It's called the Golden Gate Bridge. One, two, three. I have to go see it. Then Golden Gate Bridge, here we come. Let's Geo go! Oops! Bye, Do Re Mi! Have fun! Hmm, the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, that gives me an idea. There's California! And there's 
near San Francisco. We're almost there, ABC. Whoa! I wonder who that is. I saw that statue when we were searching. That's Joseph Strauss. He led the team that built the bridge. Speaking of the bridge, look at how tall those towers are. I wonder what they're for. Well, let's find out. Oh, wow! ABC and 123, my kids love you! Whoa! Look how high up we are! My name's Mario. What brings you to the top of the Golden Gate Bridge? Well, we tried building a long bridge, but it started swaying and sagging. So we thought we'd come here to learn how Joseph Strauss built a bridge that's more than a mile long. Strauss's brilliant idea was to make the Golden Gate Bridge what's called a suspension bridge. See those giant cables on both sides that swoop from one tower to the other? The roadway below is actually hanging from those cables. So the roadway is what you call suspended from the cables. So that's why they call this a suspension bridge. Well, I better get back to work. I've got a lot of painting to do. Are you painting this whole bridge by yourself? Oh, no. There are about 30 of us who keep applying a fresh coat of international orange paint to keep the rust away. That's the actual name of this color. Then why do they call it the Golden Gate Bridge? Good question, ABC. Here's a map of the area before the bridge was built. Now, do you see how this water has land around it? That makes it a good place for ships, because the land helps to protect them from ocean storms. A place like that has a special name. Oh, oh, I know this one. It's called a bay. Right. So, this is called the San Francisco Bay. Look at the ships and boats. A few hundred years ago, an explorer named this opening between the Pacific Ocean and the San Francisco Bay the Golden Gate. So that's why it's called... The Golden, Golden Gate, Gate Bridge! What do you say, one, two, three? Are you ready to see more? Sure! But how? Sliding down the cable, of course. Come on! Mario, how do you get down? Oh, the elevator! You hear that? ABC?
and one, two, three. Oh, welcome aboard. Thanks. What are you fishing for? Well, out there in the open water, mostly bass and California halibut. And by the base of the tower, here, mostly rockfish. There are harbor seals, too, but we don't fish for them, of course. <laughs> the base of the tower? I've got to dive in and see what it looks like. Oh, and sharks. Sharks? <laughs> Maybe you should just stick your head in. Good thinking, one, two, three. This is awesome! <laughs> Wildlife, it's incredible! And it looks like the tower goes right down into the bottom of the bay. Oh, ABC, I can't wait to build our own suspension bridge. Thanks! Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye! Bye! And I saw a seal and a shark. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Whoa! Ooh, what did you end up painting? Ready! Oh, the bridge is ready! Amazing bridge! We learned how to make a really long suspension bridge with cables and towers! Just like the Golden Gate Bridge! Ready to test it out? Ready! I think it's working! Me too! Woohoo! I'm so oh, proud of us! It. Ooh, one, two, three! Maybe we should paint it! <gasps> Did you say paint? Ready? Set? Open your eyes. Take a look at my surprise. Whoa! It's the Golden Gate Bridge! I painted it in the style of an artist named Sarah, who is famous for making paintings with small dots of color like this. Well, I think the painter we met, Mario, would absolutely love it. It's a real work of art. One, two, three. I know that fire-breathing dragons only exist in stories. But you know how I love stories! <laughs> I certainly do. 
And guess what else she said? It's more than 13,000 miles long! Whoa! I gotta know more! I can't wait until tomorrow! That's 24 hours! Or 1,440 minutes. Oh, I can't wait that long! Let's find out right now! Let's, Let's search it! it. <laughs> Let's see! Dragon? China? 13,000 miles long? Ancient protector? Wait! Look at the end of that wall! Does that look like a dragon putting its head into the water? Hey, look! That wall looks like a dragon putting its head into the water! Well, do re -mi answered that question! Whoa! It's called Old Dragon's Head, and it's part of the Great Wall of China! A wall that is more than 13,000 miles long! And it was built over many hundreds of years to protect the Chinese people from their enemies! <gasps> I think the Great Wall is the Great Dragon! Let's Geo go! Okay, we know Old Dragon's Head goes into the Bull High Sea in northeastern China, which is... Right there! Look! My name is Jingjing. Ni hao. Hello. Ni hao. Hello. Welcome to the Wanli Changchen. Wanli Changcheng. The Great Wall. I'm here doing a report. Maybe we can share what we learn. Great idea, Doremi. I learned that some parts of the wall were built more than 2,000 years ago. Whoa. Oh, before I forget, can I get a picture? Wow! Someone's flying a dragon kite! It's coming right at us! Duck! <laughs> <sighs> he never ducks. Oh, no! How will he get down? Oh, he'll figure out a way. He always does. like a dragon! Come back, ABC! Coming! <laughs> now that was as you and fun! And amazing! Not as amazing as the Great Wall! It goes on forever! Ooh, I read they used a special mix of ingredients that worked so well that some of the oldest sections are still standing. Wanna guess what those ingredients were? Ooh, was it bubblegum? <laughs> no, do re -mi. it wasn't bubblegum. Was it cement? Cement wasn't invented yet. The answer is... Rice soup! Rice soup? The workers discovered that if they mixed rice soup in with sand and dirt and other ingredients, they could use it to hold the bricks and stones together. Yup, not moving at all. This wall is incredible. I wish that the people that worked on it had signed it like an artist signs a painting. Actually, in some parts of the wall, like at Sumatai, they did. Oh, we should go there. Absolutely! Bye! Okay, bye! Oh, too bad. I forgot to get that picture. There's Sumatai! Well, who could that be? Whoa! ABC, one, two, three, and do re mi. What a surprise! My name's Professor Chen. Hi, Hi Professor, Professor Chen. Chen. Ni hao. I'm on an official expedition to see how the wall is doing. And? Well, for a wall with parts that are more than 2,000 years old, it's incredible! It's the rice soup! <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for bricks here that are signed by the people that built this part of the wall. I just saw one. 
It's right over here. Hang on. It says, in the fifth year of the Wanli period, built in Shitang Road. That means it was placed here almost 450 years ago. Every brick is a part of history. Whoa. I'm not sure this part of the wall will do a very good job of keeping China's enemies away. <laughs> Fortunately, the Great Wall isn't needed to protect the people of China from enemies anymore. Whew, good thing, because this part is... Well, falling apart. Some sections of the wall, like right here, haven't been fixed in hundreds of years, while other parts have been carefully rebuilt so that you can see how it would have looked when it was first made. They're rebuilding the wall? Yes, and sometimes the workers make wonderful discoveries when they're doing it. Like what? Like the time a worker discovered the oldest piece of paper with writing on it. He found the paper tucked between some bricks. It was discovered near a watchtower, just like that one. Why do they call it a watchtower? Come on, I'll show you. Wow! This is like the view I had from the kite. From up here, the soldiers could see their enemies coming from miles away. So what would they do if they saw an army coming? I met a tour guide at the Great Wall Museum in Ba Daling, who is just the person to tell you. There it is! China. Three tickets for the tower tour, please. For you three, the tickets are always free. It's just through these doors. And here we are. Now, I have to warn you, there are a lot of valuable things in the museum. Please watch your step. What you're looking at is a very small model of the wall. The watchtowers were actually built from one to three miles apart. If the soldiers saw an army coming, they'd light the wood that was always kept ready on top of their tower. The soldiers in the nearby towers would see those fires and then light their own, quickly spreading the news that an attack was coming. Wow! The great dragon did breathe fire! Oh, but what if the enemy came during the day? When the sun was out, would flames be seen from far away? No, that's why in daylight, the soldiers in the watchtowers did something different. They burned things along with the wood that made lots of smoke. And that's how people many miles apart would quickly spread the news about an army invasion. Wait! This says the Great Wall is not one long wall. It's really made up of a lot of different parts. And together, all of the parts add up to the largest thing anyone has ever built. Wow! We have so much to tell Jing Jing. Thank you, Mr. Tour Guide. Bye! Sai Jin! Bye! Yes, and it's the biggest thing people ever built. I'm going to add that to my report, too. Oh, before you go... Smile! Ready? on this trip. We sure did. Everyone was G-R-E-A-T great. Just like the Great Wall of China. Whoa! Careful, ABC. Those blocks might fall over. No, I used a special rice soup paste to hold them together. They're not going anywhere. Uh-oh. Uh I might have got a little paste on my feet. Don't worry, we can help. <laughs> this is fine! <laughs> the Great Wall of China is something to see. A sight to behold that's as great as can be. Some walls are as wide, some walls are as strong. But no other wall in the world is as long.
one, two, three, and do, re, mi. There's endless people and places to see. From the classroom, they can search and explore. With every adventure, you learn more. They visit countries near and far. They love to learn wherever they are. They see the world in a brand new way. They make great new friends every day. I am? You have to be perfectly still. I'm almost done. Can I see? <laughs> Not until it's finished. And I'm... done! With the first shoe! <laughs> the first shoe? <laughs> when I'm done, this will be my tallest statue ever. It's going to be over five inches tall! That's taller than we are! Cool! Hey, I wonder what's the tallest statue in our 50 states. Oh, me too. Oops. Oh, that's okay, one, two, three. That's something I want to see too. Let's search it. Look, that's the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is on Liberty Island in New York Harbor. The National Park Service says it's 151 feet and one inch from the base of the statue to the top of the torch. So, if we're four inches tall, how many of us would it take to reach the top if we're standing on each other's heads? It would take about 453 of us. Hold still down there. Oh, I want to go to the top of that torch! Me too! What are we waiting for? It's time to explore! Then let's Geo go! Look, a sign! New York City! Come on! Okay, got it, Mom. You'll text me when it's time to meet for the tour. See you soon! ABC, one, two, three, and do re mi. Do re mi fa so la ti. Whoa! Hi. 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 I'm Nick. Isn't this statue amazing? So amazing. Are you here to explore the Statue of Liberty too? We sure are. Hey, Nick. Do you know how we can get to the top of the torch? My family's going on a tour. I don't know if it goes all the way up there, but you can come with us if you want. Oh, that that's sounds it. great. What about you, do re mi? Oh, a tour would be fun. But right now, I'm wondering why they painted her green. She's actually not painted green. She looks that way because the outside of the statue is made of a metal called copper. Yep, and copper turns green when it's left outside for a long time. Nick, did the ranger tell you why it's called the Statue of Liberty? Liberty means being free to do and say what you want as long as you're not hurting other people. The statue stands for the idea that in America, you're free to do these things. Oh, I guess that's why it's such an important statue. Oh, that's my mom. Have to go. See you on the tour. Bye. See you Bye. later. I wonder who made the Statue of Liberty. It says right here. It was a French artist named Frédéric Bartholdi. The statue was a gift from the people of France who thought the United States was an example of liberty for the whole world. I read that there are broken chains at the statue's feet that stand for when America broke away from Great Britain to become its own country. It's the one part of the statue that you can't see from here. And people don't get to go up there. Good thing we're not people. Raise you to the feet! We made it! Look how big her feet are! <laughs> 25 feet to be exact! That means she'd wear a size 879 shoe! Good thing she never wears out her sandals! Because it would be really hard to find another pair! <laughs> we better find Nick. We don't want to miss the tour. Let's check out the museum before they start the tour. Okay. Let's go! Look, 
There was a fort here before the statue was built. Whoa! Is this what the Statue of Liberty's face looks like up close? It says here it's an exact copy. Some people think Bartaldi made the face look like his mother. Aw, that is so sweet. Um, where's ABC? I'm over here! Look, this was the statue's first torch. What's it doing here? It started leaking when it rained, so it was replaced in 1986. 1986? That was the statue's 100th birthday! Oh, what a perfect birthday present! Oh, look, here's a poem. Oh, listen to this part. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Golden door? I haven't seen a golden door around here. Have you? The poem says that because New York Harbor is like a door into America for people who come to visit or live here. The Statue of Liberty really is important to people around the world. Yeah, think about all the people who left the countries where they were born to start a new life here in the United States. Think of it, coming into New York Harbor and seeing the Statue of Liberty. The tour's starting. Yay, the hey, tour! Let's go! <gasps> there must be a gazillion steps! 146 to be exact. To the top we go! Ta-da! Only 145 steps to go! Uh, I might have a better idea. Yep, this is going to be way faster. Good call, one, two, three. I can almost see the top. Uh-oh. Better get going. Want a race? What are you waiting for, ABC? <laughs> we got him this time, Doremi. Wow! There they are! Whew. You can see for miles from up here! And when the torch is lit, I bet ships can see the statue from miles away! They can! The statue was used for a while like a lighthouse. The torch guided ships into the harbor at night. Look! You can see the statue's crown! Oh! The seven points look like rays of light! Next stop, the top! Who's ready to see the torch? Oh, I am! Then let's get going! Sorry, ABC. This is where the tour ends. We can't go any higher. Oh! Oh! There might be a way after all! Can we use your phone again, please? Hello! Hi! Hello! Nice to meet you! Well, this is a happy surprise. We came to see the top of the Statue of Liberty! Mm hmm Then you've come to the right place. Hold on! There she is! Liberty enlightening the world! Don't you mean the Statue of Liberty? Well, the statue's full name is Liberty Enlightening the World. When you understand something, you're enlightened. So the statue's name means that freedom helps bring understanding. That's right, ABC. But people almost always just call it the Statue of Liberty. This is <laughs> F-U-N fun! Whoa. I'm having fun on this helicopter ride, but suddenly I feel all squiggly inside. I think we better get Do Re Mi home. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Ready! I call it. One, two, three, lighting the way. I love it. Me too. I'm so tall. <laughs> you haven't even seen the best part. Watch this. Wow! She's really light. 
leading the way. <laughs> <laughs> Can she light a little less of the way? <laughs> <laughs> Better? <laughs> Much! <laughs> and the hare. It is an Aesop's fable. It was a story told long ago by a man named Aesop. He had just one name, Aesop. One name just like Nano! <laughs> That's right. This story has great characters. A tortoise, he's here on the cover, and a hare. This is the hare. Now, get your ears ready to listen. Get your eyes ready to look, and get your brain ready to wonder. Ready! Let's read The Tortoise and the Hare. There's a special message before the story. Let's read it and see what the author has to tell us. Aesop's Fables. What are Aesop's fables? Legend tells us that Aesop lived a very long time ago in a place called Greece and became famous for telling stories that were intended to teach lessons about life. We call his stories Aesop's Fables. Oh, so this story is a fable. What's a fable again? That's a story that teaches a lesson. Oh! The Tortoise and the Hare One day, a hare, a kind of rabbit, was bragging about how fast he could run and laughing at a tortoise, a kind of turtle, for being so slow. <sighs> Look at that hare. I can tell he's bragging. And I think he's saying, I'm so fast, I'm the best. Much to the hare's surprise, the tortoise challenged the hare to a race. Thinking that this was very funny, the hare accepted the challenge. The tortoise and the hare asked their friend, the fox, to judge the race. The race began, and of course, the hare was soon far ahead of the tortoise. Wow, the hare is really fast. Uh-huh. Soon, the hare had reached the halfway point in the race. Because it was a beautiful sunny day, the hare decided to stop running and play a while. He then took a nap in a shady spot. Even if the tortoise passes me while I sleep, thought the hare, I can easily catch up and reach the finish line first. Hmm, <laughs> the hare is taking a nap in the middle of a race? Look, here comes the tortoise. What do you think will happen while the hare is napping? Nano isn't sure! Me either. <laughs> Let's read and find out. The tortoise, meanwhile, kept walking along slowly and steadily toward the finish line. 
He couldn't run nearly as fast as the hare, but he never stopped to rest or play. While the tortoise continued on, the hare lost track of time and slept longer than he had intended. When the hare woke up, he was surprised that the tortoise was nowhere in sight. I see the tortoise on this page. He is at the top of the hill. See him? Then he is gone. I think he walked over the hill and I think he passed the hare. The hare jumped up and ran off at full speed. <laughs> wow, the hare is working really hard to catch up. I wonder if he'll win the race. What do you think? Yay! It looks like a lot of you think he will. But when the hare reached the finish line, he found that the tortoise was already there waiting for him. Although the tortoise was much slower than the hare, because the tortoise did not stop to rest, he won the race. The end. <laughs> the tortoise won the race, and he even had time to get a cold drink. Did you think that was going to happen? No! It was a soup, soup, super surprise! What's this? There's a special message on the last page. Moral of the story. Slow and steady wins the race. So, the lesson is, if we keep working hard, slow and steady, like the tortoise, we can win at anything. That makes me think about reading. If we practice every single day, we can win by becoming fantastic readers. Yip, 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 yip. Welcome to story time. This is our special time to share a story together. Yay, yay, yippity, yeah! Today, I'll be reading the story from this book, Big Bug and a Little Bug. The story has the cutest characters. There's a big bug. He's on the cover. Cute! And a little bug. This is the little bug. Even cuter! They are going to work together to solve a problem. Now, get your ears ready to listen, get your eyes ready to look, and get your brain ready to wonder. One day, a very little bug fell into a hole he dug. Help me, help me, said the bug. I fell into a hole I dug. A big bug saw the little bug. He saw the hole the bug had dug. I will help you, said the big bug. I will give your leg a tug. Ooh, look, the big bug's back is so colorful. It looks like a rainbow! The little bug said, Please, I beg, do not tug hard on my leg. Just give one tug, one little tug. That is all I need, big bug. Aw, big bug is helping. And with a great big smile! The big bug gave the leg a tug. He pulled out the little bug. <laughs> Yay, he did it! Thank you, said the little bug. He gave the big bug one big hug. Aw, how cute, Nano! Aww. The end. <laughs> big bug was a great helper, don't you think? Nano thinks so! Ooh, I see lots of hearts! Good job, Big Bug! Way to go! Aw, they both look so happy now! I'm glad the little bug is okay! Woo! Hey, would you like to hear the story one more time? Nano wants to hear it again, too! <laughs> Great! Let's do it! 
This time, I'm going to read it straight through without stopping. You can listen to the words and look at the characters in the illustrations, okay? One day, a very little bug fell into a hole he dug. Help me, help me, said the bug. I fell into a hole I dug. A big bug saw the little bug. He saw the hole the bug had dug. I will help you, said the big bug. I will give your leg a tug. The little bug said, please, I beg, do not tug hard on my leg. Just give one tug, one little tug, that is all I need, big bug. The big bug gave the leg a tug. He pulled out the little bug. Thank you, said the little bug. He gave the big bug one big hug. The end. Guess what? This book is in the ABC Mouse Library. Nana loves going to the library. You can listen to it as many times as you like. You can even make it one of your favorites. Please join me for the next story time when it's time to share a story again. Bye bye, bibbidi bye. Hi, I'm Miracle, and welcome to Storytime. This is our special time to share a story together. Yay, yay, yippity, yay! Yeah! Today, I'll be reading the story from this book, The Lion and the Mouse. In this story, the mouse has a big problem, and then the lion has a big problem. It's very exciting. Oh! Now, get your ears ready to listen, get your eyes ready to look, and get your brain ready to wonder. Ready! Let's read The Lion and the Mouse. Let's read The Lion and the Mouse. Hey, look, there's a special message. Let's read it and see what the author has to tell us. Aesop's Fables. What are Aesop's Fables? Legend tells us that Aesop lived a very long time ago in a place called Greece and became famous for telling stories that were intended to teach lessons about life. We call his stories Aesop's Fables. So this story is a fable a short story that will teach us a lesson. Here we go! The Lion and the Mouse One day, a mighty lion, tired from hunting all morning, lay down to take a nap under a large, shady tree. Aw, the lion looks so comfy, like he has no problems at all. The lion looks like it's snoring! Some mice that lived at the foot of the tree scrambled over the sleeping lion to return to their home. <laughs> the mice look like they're having a great time. But just as the last mouse was crawling over him, the lion woke up. The lion laid his big paw on the little mouse, trapping him. I wonder what the little mouse will do. The mouse was very afraid. He apologized to the lion for disturbing him and begged him to spare his life and let him go. The lion pitied the little mouse, so he lifted his paw and set the mouse free. Woo! The mouse is okay! 
boy, he looked so scared while he was having his problem. And then he was so happy when it was solved. Sometime later, the lion was walking near the mouse's home. The lion accidentally stepped on a trap set by a hunter, and a net made of thick ropes captured the lion and pulled him up into a tree. Being trapped in a net is a big problem for a big lion. I wonder if he'll be able to escape. What do you think? It looks like a lot of you think he will. I wonder how he'll solve this terrible problem. The lion struggled to free himself, but could not. His angry roars rumbled through the forest as he became upset and afraid. I wonder how he'll solve this terrible problem. Hurry, let's find out! The mouse heard the lion's cries. Remembering the lion's kindness, the mouse ran to the tree and climbed up to the trap. He used his sharp little mouse teeth to gnaw through the thick ropes and set the lion free. <laughs> Look at the chompers on that mouse. I'm glad he was around to help, aren't you? Yes, yes, yippity, yes! That little mouse is the best! The lion and the mouse were friends forever after. Both of them had learned that it is good to help someone who has helped you. Aw, they're smiling now because they've got no more problems. Those are two super helpful friends. Just like Miracle and Nano. <laughs> Moral of the story, good deeds are rewarded. The lesson is, good deeds, like helping, are rewarded. Let's go help someone today. And remember to ask for help when you need it. Nano always asks for help. That's how Nano learns. Hey, would you like to hear the story one more time? Yes, yes, yippity, yes. I thought you would. But this time, I'm going to read it straight through without stopping. You can listen to the words and look at the characters in the illustrations. The Lion and the Mouse One day, a mighty lion, tired from hunting all morning, lay down to take a nap under a large, shady tree. Some mice that lived at the foot of the tree scrambled over the sleeping lion to return to their home. But just as the last mouse was crawling over him, the lion woke up. The lion laid his big paw on the little mouse, trapping him. The mouse was very afraid. He apologized to the lion for disturbing him and begged him to spare his life and let him go. The lion pitied the little mouse. So he lifted his paw and set the mouse free. Sometime later, the lion was walking near the mouse's home. The lion accidentally stepped on a trap set by a hunter and a net made of thick ropes captured the lion and pulled him up into a tree. The lion struggled to free himself, but could not. His angry roars rumbled through the forest as he became upset and afraid. The mouse heard the lion's cries. Remembering the lion's kindness, the mouse ran to the tree and climbed up to the trap. He used his sharp little mouse teeth to gnaw through the thick ropes and set the lion free. The lion and the mouse were friends forever after. Both of them had learned that it is good to help someone who has helped you. The end. Bye bye, bibbidi bye! <laughs>